Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab some paints, grab some models, and paint along with me. Let's rid our world of unpainted models together. Yes. Today, I am working on a Dreadnought. The uh, Ballistus Dreadnought from the Leviathan starter set. It is my last model before the three big HQs, and then I'm done my Dark Angels painting project. So it's really great. And then of course I'll start a new painting project probably in the new year, we'll see. I, I'm gonna need some time to assemble my Tyranids uh, if I choose Tyranids, of course, probably will. But, so today of course I'm gonna work on the Dreadnought. I'm just gonna paint, have a great time. As always, a huge shout out to Cody Rue and Adam, you missed a spot. So let's get started on this week's Painting with Jay. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. Today I'm working on the final Dreadnought. It's the final Dreadnought! Da -da -da -da. Da -da 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 -da. I always wanted to do that. Sorry, I'm crazy today. Hope everything's going well with y'all in internet land. As always, let me shout out Cody Roop. Adam, you know what I'm going to say? You missed a spot. Adam, I'm gonna actually, I'm going to take off this arm. Makes it a lot easier. Uh, yeah, makes it a little bit easier to paint. So, I'm just working on this Dreadnought right now. It's been so much fun to be painting these Dark Angels over the last few months. But my friends, I'm in the final stretch. In the home stretch. I'm working on the last uh, the last model before I paint the cool guys. So that'll be next week. Next week I'm going to be working on the chaplain on a bike. I have to assemble him. Yep. And prime him. And I'm ready for next week's painting with Jay. That's cool. So next week my goal is to have the chaplain on a bike done. And then Azrael. And then the lion. The lion might be two weeks. We'll see. But overall, it's been a great time. I really do hope you're having just as much fun as I am out there in internet land. Because it's been such a good time. I'm, I'm getting my army painted, ridden my world of unpainted models. Yeah. I've had a productive week so far. I think this is, I, I'm filming this on a Wednesday because I'm already up to four videos so far this week, including this one. That's not bad. Yeah. Four videos already. I'm so close to getting my channel remonetized. Pretty cool. So like a mini, I have mini goals for my channel again. I have new mini goals. Oops. Just looks like a scratch, I guess. Um, first one is to get it remonetized. That'd be cool. Especially around Christmas time. Look at that. That guy there. Cool. One part done. Next one. I like this. I can just assemble them, paint parts, part of the time. Yeah, let's do that. So, yeah. I'm excited. I'm in the home stretch, my friends, and it's good. I feel a sense of accomplishment. I really just want to get these guys on the tabletop painted into a tournament. There's no tournaments in my area coming up for the near future. So when there is, I will hopefully get to Yeah, hopefully get them in. It's been a crazy last few weeks, man, for Warmer 40k and all the stuff, you know. Like the Battle Forces came out and sold out. You see my video on that. And then Legions came out, sold out, but temporarily. So not as bad of a situation. 
And then this weekend, the Necron and Admech codices go up for pre-sale, I believe, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Man, so much is happening. But then, according to the roadmap, that's it for the whole summer, or winter. So I guess we're going to a phase where there's going to be no codices for a few months, which is cool. It allows the meta to settle. You know, kind of figure out things. Cool. I'm going with a pretty easy color scheme with this. You know, I'm just going to paint silver first. I decided to do that now. I'm now a silver first kind of guy in these models. If I ever slap chopped models again, which I don't know if I'm going to next one, next, well, next one I'm doing is Tyranid, so there, I won't do it for them. I'll paint silver first, because I use a wash on them, so it's good to get them out of the way sooner than later. Yeah. Hmm. That'll be black, that'll be black. It's snowing out. It's officially winter. <laughs> uh, it snows so early these days. Well, it usually snows like... It's already snowed a few times, but it's not like blizzardy right now. But and we're getting freezing rain later. I've had a productive week as far as work goes. I've been going for walks lately. I didn't go for a walk yet today. Only because I just got back from work. Um, and I decided to do a painting with Jay now, so I'll, I'll, what I can do is I can put the video up, for edit, you know, edit it, and then go for a walk. Um, you know, I usually actually go for like two to three walks a day, depending on the day. Just get my steps in, because I was realizing that I didn't get a lot of steps in on a normal day. So I'm working on that a lot. I feel better about myself. I've also been staying up. Like I find that I have more energy at night, which is cool. I don't drink a lot of caffeine or anything. Um, no, I don't. But uh, I've been having really productive days lately. I feel like I can go to bed at midnight, and it's just been like an awesome day. I feel like the days don't end. Probably because it's dark so early. You know, I'm filming this at like 5 o'clock, and it's already pitch black outside. That helps too. But it just feels like these, these days are so long. But you can get so much done in them. Look at that. Gun painted. Drop. Alright, now it's time to paint this guy. Let's paint him up. Alright, so. Yeah, that's in focus. I've already pre based him. So, not gonna be too hard of a paint job. Uh, no, not gonna be too hard at all. I'm gonna paint this part silver. And all I'm going to do is clean it up after with the um, contrast paints. So I can be a little messier with this step because I am going to clean up. So it's going for some speed, get these guys done. You know? Cool model. What else? Eh, it's not been too different of a world, you know. I um, spoke with my mother recently, and I haven't I haven't spoken to my family in a while. Let's just say that nothing too crazy going on or anything. But you know, I'm not the confrontational type or anything. I just I'm not incredibly close with my family. That's okay. And I. I won't be going back this year for Christmas. I, we, we made that conscious decision. It's just, it's a logistical nightmare. It really is. Uh, just driving, you know, it's like 4,000. So it, it'd be two and a half thousand miles, about 4,000 kilometers. 
at Christmas time when there's no hotels, there's gonna be no room at the inn, let's just say that, right? So, yeah. But that's okay. I, uh, so I talked to my mother just to catch up, you know, see what she, if she wanted something specific for, for um, Christmas, right? And we just caught up for a bit. And it's crazy, like, I, I don't, it's, it's really crazy how I, I've not seen any, I've seen one of my family members in the last three years. But not just changed. Like, I could summarize my life in a matter of sentences, in moments, in minutes. You know, and some of my family members right now are going through a time where, you know, like, where a lot of stuff happens in a short period of time, that kind of thing, you know. Like, I was talking to my mother and, like, my sister wants to adopt some, uh, a kid and my, um, my other two sisters are going through divorces right now and, um, my cousin's pregnant, my other cousin got divorced who lives, actually my cousin moved up east, out east with me, like at the same time as I did and him and his wife are now divorced and he didn't move back home. So it's just crazy and then she's like, well, so what's new exciting with you? And I'm like, um, we bought some new Christmas ornaments and bought a new razor like that was a summary like I don't have anything to say and it's kind of interesting I don't talk a lot about my videos with her and stuff but that's you know she knows I, I, I'm making them again I'm happy with this I'm having a great time Look at this guy. He's going to be painted in no time. Looking good. I can only film for another hmm, 30 minutes. Not too bad. We had like a 40 minute painting with Jay on. Why? Because I didn't charge my battery. So I lost my cord uh, a couple years ago during the move to my camera. And so now I was running off the batteries and I completely forgot to charge my battery before making this video. So I'm going to have to fit in the filming with Jay before the battery dies. The pain with Jay before the battery dies. Yeah. Maybe I should buy another battery sometime in the near future. But yeah, I'm really close to monetizing my channel, which is cool. I, I let my channel go so long unattended, I lost monetization. And it doesn't matter. Like, it's not the be all end all to me is to get remonetized, but it's just a cool goal. Like, I set myself these mini goals for my channel. Um, the first one was to put out 60 videos before the end of the year. And I'm not there yet, but I'm almost there. I'm in the 50s right now. I think this is going to be video 54, 55 since I've come back. Cool. And so that's cool. 60 videos. And then my other challenge was to myself was to get my channel remonetized just because I would love to, you know, just get the, the side income from my um, my videos. It'd be good, you know? I don't get a lot. Just be good. And so the thing is with YouTube is you have to get to 4,000 hours watched within the last uh, year. When I came back, my channel was at approximately a 3,000. But the problem is it's the last year, and I had a lot of low-viewed days in the summertime before I came back. So I have a lot of video, like days with like five hours viewed, right? So it, uh, it doesn't... So it's been hard, but I've been slowly clawing it back. And so I started, when I, when I came back, I was at like 3,000, I think 3,000 hours viewed, about that. So I need to make up another 1,000. And of course, I'm replacing a year ago's times, where a year ago's times I was made, doing about 10 hours a day. So every day that I don't make a video, it actually costs me. But that's all good. And so now I'm, I'm at like 3,000, I think as of today, 900. So I might have my channel remonetized by the end of the year. Which is cool. Um, my other goal is to see if I can get back into the uh, reviewing program. 
or Warhammer 40k. It was a lot of fun. If I can, awesome. If I can't, no problem. I'm easy. Oh, I just realized I'm on camera. Let me zoom out a little bit. There we go. Better. Yeah. So as I said, we'll see. I'm going to make some videos coming up. I've decided that. Uh, surprise. But um, I've been asked a few questions lately, and I've decided to do a little series where I think I should do some series where I'm objectively just talking about and being honest with my viewers. You know? Because I've been asked a lot of questions that I... I, I, I do try to stay a little bit politically... Not politically correct. Uh, neutral. Right? I don't... I don't know. I don't like making videos. I, I'm fully aware that negativity is so much more viewable today. And that kind of makes me annoyed with society. But negativity is so much more annoying, uh, is viewed and is given so much more attention than positivity. So if I made a video that completely crapped on GW for an hour, I would get a lot of views, I think. And a lot of YouTubers go that route. I think it's kind of a cheap way out, to be honest. And I would like to make a video, uh, again, somebody asked me recently about my honest opinion of, of lately with GW, and I would like to make a video sometime where I objectively talk about the pros and cons of Games Workshop right now. And, you know, there's things that they're doing very well, there's things that they're not doing incredibly well, but I'm not going to phrase it like, GW's killing the hobby, killing the game, they suck, no, 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 I would never do that kind of stuff. I would just um, be fair, right? I, would, I wouldn't be, I'd be respectful. And obviously, like, GW's not a perfect company, I just give positive feedback. Or feedback in general, right? Not uh, positive, but, like, things. here's what they're doing really well, here's what I think that they can improve upon. And just, that's my opinion. Like, I don't have to, you don't have to be negative and, like, they're killing me. Like, I hate those YouTubers that do that kind of crap. It's such an easy, uh, I don't hate them, but I hate that option. I hate that they do it. It's just so easy to do that, you know, again, like, there are some YouTubers in our niche, and I get it, like, we're, we're all in competition for each other's attention, in, a th in theory, but, like, when I made the video saying goodbye to scouts, there were other YouTubers who were like, GW nuked my army. No, they didn't. Nobody would be using scouts as the foundation of a space marine army that wasn't fun. It was a competitive army. They're no way going to nuke your army, right? That's a big exaggeration. Or like, um... There's a couple of YouTubers I actually really like, but every video is huge, mega update, huge news revealed, giant reveal. I'm like, no. You're exaggerating, person. You, you, you. It's not huge. You know? But it's, but going back to that, it's unfortunate that negatively gets so much more views than positivity. So, an easy example of this is I love hockey. I'm Canadian. I'm legally obligated to. And there's a really fun um, hockey YouTuber in Canada. He goes by the name Steve Dangle. Right? His real name is not Dangle. His real name is Steve. But Steve Dangle, right? And Steve Dangle is known to freak out whenever the team loses. And he's really, he likes to get, he's very passionate. Like most Maple Leaf fans are these days. We've been, you know, last time the Leafs won the Stanley Cup was 1967. 67? Yeah, 1967. So it's been a long time, right? Long time. So Steve Dangle, and he talks about this openly, is just he knows that whenever the Leafs lose bad, or usually the episode after they get eliminated from the season, they either you know, lose the playoffs, which happened a lot. It took uh, at least almost 20 years without winning a playoff series. We won a playoff series last year, and then got our butt handed to us in the second um in the second round, but um, he gets so many more views on the videos where he's being negative, or people expect him to be negative, or expect him to freak out, than the videos that he's positive. So games that the Leafs lose, 
Steve Dangle gets significantly more views than when the games Leafs win. Which just, to me, irks me a little bit because that means people like pain. They like torture. They like sadness. They like darkness more than the positivity. And I don't like that kind of... So as you see my videos, obviously I've, I've made... I have, I will for sure admit, I've made negative reviews on products, on armies, you know. My most negative video ever, I think, was my Orcs. My, uh, was it my 6th edition Orcs or my 7th edition Orcs review? That was like the most depressing one. To, that hurt my heart. That, that codex still hurts my heart. My fellow Orc players, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, that, that codex sucked. And just having to do a review on that just hurt my heart. Yeah, but whatever. I still made a review. I was, I was, I tried to stay positive. I tried to look for the positives in some cases, and yeah. I'm gonna take some wraith bone while we're filming and uh, just clean up some areas that I'm going to be painting other colors while the silver dries, and then after this, I should be able to paint the uh, the silvers with a wash. What else? Oh, I got some. I got my camera working again. So I, um, oh, going back then. I'm jumping around everywhere. So I want to do a series of videos, maybe one every few weeks, where I just there's been questions that I've been asked for years that I don't really address. I don't want to sound negative. I really don't want to. And again, I'm not going to be mean or bully or something. I'll just speak truth and respectfully and cool. Like people ask me why I left Mini Wargaming, which is actually a pretty easy answer. I'll make a video on that one. But, and, you know, how is my relationship with Mini Wargaming right now? Uh, people ask me all the time, what do I think about Mini Wargaming, what they're doing? Which is a complex answer for that one. Um, what I think about GW right now, what I think about the game, 40K, what was my experience with the reviewer program? You know, these are videos, these are topics that I could easily make a video about. And just my, my experience, because, you know, when I worked for Mini Wargaming... And again, I don't want to go into any other people's experiences, but you know what? I ended on a really good note with Dave and Matt. I still talk to them every now and then. Not very often, to be honest. We're not incredibly close. They're very busy guys. Um, but when I saw them at Adepticon, we hung out for like a couple hours, and I wish them nothing but the best. Um, they're good guys. But... And I'm not going to say who or what. I just, I know that my experience is my own and not everyone had the same experience while working in war gaming as I did. I'm just going to say that. Just like everyone has different experiences in life, right? All good. So, yeah. Just like my experience with a reviewer program. I don't know. I tend to have more positive. I think, I do tend to think of myself as an optimist sometimes. I don't know. People see me as a realist. Like, I... I could sound pessimistic, I don't know, but I see myself as an optimistic. I don't get upset or angry or jealous as much as other people I know. And I tend to be more easygoing, right? If it happens, it happens. Cool. You know, this, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. But, um, yeah, and I, I'm going to do a video series on that on some topics that I, I've never really talked about or not in a long time. And I get questions that a lot. And I'm, I'm gonna start off with, I think it's gonna be this week's, is my current thoughts on Games Workshop. And I know it's probably not gonna get a lot of views, but I'm gonna preface it, of course, with it, it's not a GW bashing video. It's not a crap on GW video. It's, let's be fair, like, this are what they're doing well. In my opinion, this is what they're not doing, amazingly, in my opinion. And it's all in my opinion, right? Just if you disagree with me, that's your opinion. I, the only thing is my, my opinion is based on, like I do talk with a lot of people and I know what some people feel and, and obviously their experiences and, but yeah. You know, in, in my, the reviewer program, cool, look at that. So it's just gonna be some pre-painted This one already painted as well. Cool. 
Um, this guy, yeah, I have fewer extra errors. Put that too. What are we? 25 minutes in. I didn't get much done at all so far. I thought I was going to get farther than this tonight. All good. Maybe we'll start painting brass. There's not a lot of brass either. That's okay. Either way, he's going to get done this week. I'm, uh, I'm done the other guy. I just have to finish basing him. But yeah, I want to do that. But I realized, like, again, it, I don't know. I've never been a win-at-all-cost person. I really haven't. But I was thinking recently, like, all the games I used to play against my friends Dave and Stu and Trevor and all the battle reports I filmed, right? And the games that I remember the most aren't necessarily the games I won. Never is. It doesn't, whether or not I won or lost, doesn't matter to me. It really doesn't. You know, I miss Dave and Tra and Stu. And it's not because I miss them because I beat them on average or not. Dave's a, Dave is a pretty fun, Dave and Stu are both fun war gamers. But uh, Dave would bring the f craziest list sometimes. It was always fun. That's a real Dave move, Dave. <laughs> I used to say that to him. There's a big commercial making fun of people named Dave. But yeah, I'm going to do that. Also, as I said, my uh, I got my camera working on my computer. My computer's old. No, I built my computer back in 2012 or 2013 to make videos, right? And I've used the same computer and the same camera. I've had this camera since 2012 and this computer since 2012 or 2013. So I think I built it when I just moved to Peterborough after leaving Mini War Gaming. That's, yeah, we'll see. So I've had them for years. So my computer's starting to really die. I eventually want to take some of the proceeds of my videos, if I start making proceeds, and get a new computer, and maybe eventually a new camera, because I need it. I do need it. My uh, camp, my computer is not is going to be no longer supported by Windows in the near future. That's pretty funny. I don't have a... My video card is so old. No, video card. My motherboard and my processor are so old, sorry, that uh, they will no longer be supported. That's okay. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get a new computer. Maybe a Mac next time. I don't know. Mac versus PC. I haven't decided that one yet. I know Chris loves his Mac. I miss Chris, by the way. I was in Chris's live... I, I was watching Chris's live show the other day. Um, so... That's a different sort of back to that. Yeah, so I, I think I should do live shows again, too. That'd be really fun. Yeah. I should do a live show this weekend. Just randomly. Like, Saturday Night J Live kind of situation. Even for an hour or two. It'd be a fun way. I really miss the live shows. Live shows are actually what I miss the most. I just didn't do live shows for a while because camera and stuff. But it was, it's really awesome to be able to interact with people in real time with a 10-second leg. You know, that I can actually talk to you, y'all, and, uh, in real time, versus through comments. He's coming along. These models are not too complex, to be honest. They're fun. I've never been the biggest fan of painting dreadnoughts. But they, it's a, it comes along easily. And, yeah, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll film a, a live show sometime this weekend if I can get the time to. And what I'll do is I'll use it as a time to uh, assemble my chaplain on a bike. You know, use that time. Assemble a live a live show. What do you think? I think I should do that. It'd be really cool to be able to talk to y'all. Then eventually I'll, I'll change times. The quality of the camera work won't be amazing, but whatever. 
I don't have multi-camera setups and all that jazz anymore. I just want to, just want to talk to you all. Y'all yeah, come back now, you hear you? These are not very um, busy models, they're very simple, so it's really fun and just easy to paint them up. They come to they come to life really easily. When I run out of the pre work with the airbrush and contrast paints, it makes things a lot easier. Yeah. Three minutes. I can paint for another I guess. Eleven minutes left of the battery. Let's keep going. I sometimes wonder if this is like a James Bond situation, you know, where, like in James Bond, where it takes like, um, like 20 seconds to do three seconds. It's like ticking down slowly but surely. Oh, I could do that with silver. Yeah, I'll do it silver. Um, I wonder if the battery's like that. That's okay. If it's a slightly shorter pain with Jay, I'll make up for it. I'll make up for it. Oh, other topics like why I stopped making videos. That's actually one of the biggest questions I get. Why did I come back to making videos? You know? Maybe I'll make a video on each of those. Why I quit and why I came back. Oh, I forgot. I missed a spot. I pulled him out. Adam, you missed a spot. I'm going to keep doing that to him until he uh, admits that he misses spots. It's gross outside. And it's garbage night. I'm gonna have to take out the trash. In a blizzard. Yeah. This guy's on his way. Look at this. I love it. Seriously, I feel so much more productive when I'm doing my painting with Jays. I gotta get my steps in later, and my painting with Jay in once a week, because I just sit down, you know, I work on this model, I dedicate an hour or so to it, and it comes to life, you know, I just, and then next week I work on the next one, and I finish it in the off time. But this has been cool, and Again, I really do hope that your journeys are coming along. Oh, what else? Happy Thanksgiving. I reminded myself, happy Thanksgiving to my American friends. All my American friends, happy Thanksgiving. Which means, it's Black Friday this weekend. Crazy shopping. These days, I don't think it's as crazy as it once was, where I, like, every time I, like, I see the states, it's like, oh, people trampled. I don't think that happens as much anymore. Stomp. Um, you know, they have to be Pokemon or something. But, uh... <laughs> In Canada, we really don't have that as much because the sales aren't really as huge. The deals aren't worth it to kill another person. Um, and these days, especially, it's like Boxing Day month, right? It's like Black Friday month. Black Friday sales have already been happening at Canadian stores for three weeks already. And like, because Christmas stuff's already been on sale for like a month and a half. And, you know, Boxing Day sales are going to start on December 1st. And they've kind of killed that day of the, the month thing, you know? But uh, it's Black Friday, which means a Canadian Tiger, it's Red Thursday. 
which is a real thing. And it's like the biggest day of the year, Canadian Tire. I go every year. I do go to that because the sales are good. It's only for the day, so it's, it's cool. Uh, or for the weekend, but um, they usually have crazy sales. But the key is you got to just not catch yourself because what Canadian Tire is really good at is honestly they'll jack up prices like three weeks beforehand. And then uh, drop them for Red Thursday. You know, there's like these bottles, these water bottles that every year they go on sale for the same price. And then in the off season, they all of a sudden jack up to like tw four, five times the amount. And they're like, oh, look, great sale. Like, but no one would pay that much for that, you know? So, I'm aware, Sneaky Pete's. I think I just painted my shirt. Whatever. <laughs> so you have to be very conscious. Imagine if GW did Black Friday sales. That'd be nuts. They call it Black Library Friday sales. Yeah. But I've, I've never, I've always wanted to go to the States for like a Black Friday sale. It'd be insane. I see like the trampling, you know, like crazy people fighting over TV. I don't know if that still happens. My American friends, leave comments in the comment section down below. Does that still happen? Is that just blown out of proportion? I'm assuming that 99% of the Black Friday sales are very casual and very relaxed and very proper and people don't fight. But it's just, I, I'm certain people go into some of these places just simply with their phones on, just so that they can uh, capture some crazy people fighting over TV. I'm pretty sure that happens. Let me know. And uh, like my British friends, do you guys still have, do you have that in Great Britain? We have a bit of it in Canada, but as I said, not too crazy. You don't usually see two Canadians fighting over an item. Not even a Red Thursday, which is a thing. <laughs> yeah. So happy Thanksgiving, my American friends. So then after t this weekend, it's officially Christmas time in your season. Christmas time. Alright. It's coming along okay. Just slowly but surely, this guy is gonna be done. Well before next week. How much time do I have left? Uh, about ten minutes. Let's hit this dude with the shade. Give it a shading and here, you know, and then uh, I'll come back later and finish him up. I am looking forward to doing I think Tyranids is my official decision. I think I've officially decided Tyranids next. Because, uh, number one, it's just a simple, like, I have a box, right? I might pick up a, a, Nor a Norn Emissary box, because I do think that they're cool. Um, that's it. I was thinking of maybe some Neurothropes, but uh, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to go for them, because I already have a lot of Tyranids, um, I don't have the Tyranid Codex yet, actually. No. The official Codex. I gotta get that. So, that's done. But, uh, oh no, I have the Tyranid Codex. Of course I do. Sorry. I only use it like twice. But yeah, I have the Tyranid Codex. Sorry. I have all the new, I have the two new codices. What was I saying? Caught myself in a lie. Web of lies. So my American friends, what are you thankful for? Please leave that in the comment section down below. Are you going Black Friday shopping? Are you going to start a fight over a TV? A TV? That'd be cool. If I ever saw some of my viewers, I know what some of y'all look like. I know what some of y'all look like. I know what some of y'all look like. I, if I have a son like some, you know, Mikey or Adam. Of course, Adam is Canadian, but he lives on the border. So maybe Adam. I could totally see Adam from Greenleaf Terrain. Adam, you missed a spot. And then he's like, ah, attack. For the TV. I'm starting to just get into gibberish. This is kind of fun. But yeah, I'm going to make these videos. I'm, I'm going back to a zone where I'm making videos that I want to make, but also videos that people want to watch. I'm slowly catching on to that. A little bit at a time. 
because it's always a hybrid of the two. You can't just make videos that you want to make. You can't just make videos that you people want to watch, because in one case no one will watch your videos, in the other case no one will, uh, you won't get any views. Hmm. The other one, sorry, you'll be miserable. You can't just make videos for other people. I did that for a while. I'll talk about that sometime too. But I wasn't miserable, but I just found myself making more videos for other people than for myself. And now that I'm not even monetized yet, it's kind of fun. I can just kind of do what I want. I'm free range, Jay. Yeah. I like this guy. He's coming along. He'll be done for next week. And then, the fun guys. I'm excited. I'm not doing another, um, I'm not doing another update until I'm done for my army. Also, of course, if you've seen the models that they're pre-res, pre, you know, showing the Tyranids, not Tyranids, Dark Angels. Uh, we're getting some new uh, knights. I'm not probably buying a new knight kit. Because I like my other knights. Don't really need more knights. The knights with swords are cool, but I think that they, they're, I do feel that they're more Grey Knighty than Dark Angel-y. So, we'll see. Happy Thanksgiving to y'all. I know most of my viewers are American, so happy Thanksgiving. I missed a spot. Another spot. Oh my goodness, two spots. Double Adam. Triple spot this. Okay. That's okay. I'm gonna just get those guys done. Right there and there. Good. So where are we at as far as time goes? Forty. One minute into the video. Yeah, I might end here. I only have like two minutes left of the camera battery. So, but in the end, here he is so far. He's not done yet. I have the arms separate. Um, they're gonna just, they're just going to uh, try on their own. But I'm gonna paint the, uh, the, the black areas next, clean that up. And all the purity seals. Cool. He's not going to take very long. I'll have him painted in the, in the meantime. He'll be done well before next week. And then next week is the apothecary on a bike. Yes! Not apothecary. Chapel on a bike. So let's end now. And that concludes another Painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed this week's Painting with Jay and painted along with me. I hope your painting projects are coming along well. Leave comments in the comment section down below. As always, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell so that you see every time I put up a new video. And stay tuned for a lot more videos. I have a lot of ideas, but uh, leave comments in the comment section down below of everything I talked about today. As I said, I love to talk to you, and maybe I'll do a live show in the near future. So, uh, thank you for painting along with me. Thank you for reading a world of unpainted models. And this is Jay saying, happy painting. With me?